There's nothing that I've not done. I'm one person who I used to collect money. Even if the devil will come and sit in my service, I'll collect money from him, the devil himself. I'll collect money from him. I'll make sure that I take offering from the devil. 2019, God spoke to me in a vision. I turned around, then I began to speak. I spoke about my encounter. You don't know my experience. If you can judge me and everything, but you don't know what it takes to do the things that I've done. Many people say, no, he's not stable. He goes back, he goes forward. Do you know how it feels like to fly in a private jet for no reason? Do you know how it feels like to drive Rolls Royce and Bentley for no reason? Not because you're, just for no reason, just to drive Bentley. Do you know how it feels like all of a sudden you have to walk alone, yet you used to walk with 15 bodyguards for no reason. Do you know how it feels like? Do you know how it feels like to downgrade your life from there? Come down, come down, come down, come down to the people. You don't know. You don't know how it feels like. Most of your false prophets who are selling oil, selling water, selling what, what, wristbands and everything. Some of these tricks, we are the ones who taught them and told them, if you want to make money, just tell them the wristband will heal you and they'll buy it, they go, if it heals them or not, it doesn't matter. Have your money in your pocket. So when I come and I tell you, this is the back to Christ movement. I know where I'm coming from. I know that before I took a journey to go to Benin, to West Africa, taking a flight just to go and be given a big horn like this full of blood and everything, put it in my suitcase, jump into a flight and just fly with a horn in my bag, all the way from Ghana, coming down to Zimbabwe, from Zimbabwe to South Africa. You, do you know? You, you, you don't understand. When I say this is the back to Christ movement, I'm telling you that it's only Jesus who can save you, nobody else. When God spoke to me, no pastor preached a message to me. 2019, nobody preached to me. It was Jesus himself who appeared to me and he gave me the revelation back to Christ. And they said, go and tell them that only Jesus and nothing else. That is why they wrote Jesus or nothing on that banner. Either Jesus or nothing. Are you there? I have two minutes and then I sit down. 2019, I did my last program in East London, Eastern Cape. It was packed, thousands of people. Thousands, I'm talking about thousands of people. Those who used to attend my services in Iceland and know what I'm talking about. 2020. Most of these, they, they would come to me, men of God, give me power. Give me what you have. I want to be like you. Yeah. 2020 came. The lockdown came, perfect opportunity to tell the world that only Jesus saves. When the lockdown came, I began to speak. Many people said, he's crazy. Some said, he's bitter. Some said, no, he's, he's whatever, he's this, he's that. It's fine. 2021 came. When I began to speak, I was looking for people like my father who's here today. Just to come and tell me that you are doing the right thing, continue. That's all I needed. But I never got that. I got attacks from everywhere. And one day I woke up in the morning and said, I'm tired of this Christianity nonsense. I don't want to be part of the Bazalwane anymore. Staying in Santin. Talk about popping bottles and popping champagne. Do you know 
Have you ever popped 100, 200,000 runs in one day, just champagne, buying alcohol? I did that. Because I was tired of Christianity. I said, I, will not, I don't want to be involved in this Christianity anymore. Because what I'm trying to do to help people, I'm being crucified for. So I'd rather leave this whole Christianity thing and do something else. In everything that I would do, going out, partying, I'm probably one of the few people, few Zimbabwean guys, who would host the best parties in Santin and I will invite, talk about slave queens and whatever. There's no slave queen who doesn't know me. Yeah, go to Jobek, ask them, do you know a guy called King? They'll tell you, that's me, King. They'll tell you. They'll tell you. We know him. We know him. Stayed in a penthouse or in whatever. Moved from one penthouse to the other penthouse. From one penthouse. You, you know flat. I'm not talking flat. I'm talking penthouse. I'm talking... A double story that you find in a very tall building but you enter you think it's a flat you find a double story inside the flat <laughs> I'm about to sit down and now when I had given up and said I don't want to preach anymore the dreams would come where I'll be preaching and preaching, preaching and preaching. You are sitting here judging J. Israel because you don't know the journey. You were born in church. There has never been a day that you have taken cocaine. Ask me. I'll be drawing the lines on the table, taking the cocaine and making sure that I get high. Drowning my sorrows away with drugs and everything. So today when I tell you that Jesus was nothing, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. The burning desire to preach was there, has been there, has always been there. I gave up everything and I said, I don't want this anymore. But I found myself on my knees again crying one day and asking God this is not the life that I want to live for the rest of my life there is a journey that I started I want to continue with my journey and finish it I remember I think it was maybe a week after I prayed that prayer I went on my Facebook responding to messages on my Facebook page and then I saw an account written Tozake Wilson Siko. I opened. I saw messages, more than five that were there. Since two years back. And that was last year, August. Then I responded, I said, Shalom. And the bishop said, Give me your number, I want to talk to you. We spoke on the phone. He invited me and he said, come to Cape Town. I asked myself, am I ready for this? Should I go, should I not? Should I go, should I not? He asked me several times. At some point, he felt like I didn't want to come. We spoke and we spoke and we spoke. And then finally, I said, I prayed a prayer and God did not answer the way that I was expecting him to answer. Maybe this is God answering me. I came to Cape Town. I met the bishop. He preached to me a message without opening a Bible, without saying any word. You didn't hear me. He preached to me a message without saying a word. He gave me a sermon. I understood it. And I said, from today, you are my father. Because where you took me from, if it was not for the God who spoke to you to talk to me, maybe I would have been shot or maybe I would have been because the things I was getting myself into, 
talk about controlling a city getting into a restaurant those who know something you go to Oram, Leonardo, you go to Godfather, Santin Sky, you go to Bolt, all those restaurants, those in our Zambes. Those used to be my places. I used to get there, they give me the VIP area because that's how it was. But my bishop spoke to me and he said, Son, you belong on the altar, you belong on the pulpit. Come back and do what God has called you to do. So I'm not just saying this because I want you to, to feel bad, no. Along the way, before that I had friends that I used to walk with and move with and everything were together. One of them called me and said, hey Baba, where are you? I said, no, I'm here. I said, come, let's make money. I said, ah, money, I miss money, let's go. But my father never gave up. He called me again and said, son, leave where you are. Come here now. And I found myself back again on the right track. Let's all be on our feet. I'm not going to say I want to introduce to you because he's my father. He is the one who has to introduce me to you. Dead where you took me from, only God knows. And I don't take it for granted. I love you so much with all my heart, with everything that is within me. And I know that God has a purpose for me and for you. And my desire and my prayer is not to let you down and not to let God down. This time, we are doing this. And I'm ready for this. Back to Christ. Everybody, back to Christ. I was talking to somebody last night and the person said to me, man of God, I've got one word for you, consistency. I said, I hear you. I heard you twice. I heard you three times. I will keep that word in my mind everywhere I go. I have my father in the house, the bishop, the founder and the overseer of CFC in Strand, Bishop Siko. The Emeritus, the bishop, the apostle is right here. Let's put our hands together for him. And now, I'm not going to talk about the bishop here that I love so much and respect. It's not in my shoes. I'm, 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 my, 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 is it my shoes or my sandals? They are too small or big. Whether small or big, but there is sandals and feet that is involved. So <laughs> I allow my father to do that. Amen and amen. I also have my mother in the house, very beautiful, very beautiful, glowing, shining. Let's put our hands together for the lady bishop in the house. And we, I'm going to allow my father to come forward and address us, whatever that the Lord has laid in his heart. And then afterwards, we have Tehila in the house and we have Siwapiwe Kweyama in the house. So, source of Amnand. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my uh, privilege, the privilege and an honor to invite my father to come on stage. Let's put our hands together for Bishop Sigo. Let's put our hands together. Come on, somebody. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. 